righty. Well, hello and welcome, everybody. Thank you for taking some time to spend some time with us here today. My name is Larson Stair. I am the CEO and co-founder here at Demoflow, and I am joined by Nikki and Molly, a pre-sales and sales enterprise sales rep who have had a chance to work together in the past. So I'm really excited to dig in with the two of you here today. And what the kind of topic for our discussion is, is around discovery process. And specifically, how do we have these two parties, both pre-sales and sales, kind of work the discovery process together as a team throughout the entire sales cycle here. So seem like two great people to have on the discussion here today. So, but before we jump into any of that, um, I would love to get some background from the two of you. So Nikki, if you wouldn't mind uh, a little bit of background to yourself to kind of kick us off here. Yeah, I'm Nikki Simonuti. I'm currently an enterprise sales engineer at a firm, which is a fintech company, but I used to work really closely with Molly at Iterable, which is where I was at last. Excellent. Well, thank you, Nikki. I appreciate that. And excited to get some of your best practices here today from the pre-sales perspective. And Molly, if you wouldn't mind, a little bit of background on yourself. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Molly Dietrich. I'm an enterprise sales rep here at Iterable. Been at the company for a little over three years and got the pleasure of working with Nikki on the pre-sales side a lot, especially as we started to get into a lot of the bigger enterprise accounts. So i um, excited to talk through a little bit of that, that today. Excellent. Excellent. Well, cool. So as, as I mentioned, you know, really the topic of the discussion here today, given we have kind of these two different distinct parties on the line here, both pre-sales and sales, is we're going to talk about discovery process, but specifically, how do we go about preparing for a discovery call or process together? Um, how do we, and when we're in that call, how do we start to handle some objections there? And also, what are some of the benefits of including pre-sales early in the process and some of the impacts that that can have on the deal? So where I'd like to start is, Molly, why don't you tell me a little bit more about, hey, how do we prepare as a team and make sure that the two of you are perfectly in sync on that discovery process? Yeah, great question. So I think, like, one, I'm always preparing a lot of research on who we're talking to, a lot of research on just what the account is going through, what that company has maybe had happen recently. Um, I think all of that stuff's pretty standard. Most sales reps are doing that kind of stuff. Um, but then when we think about having another person on the call with me, like Nikki and bringing an SC, we call them solutions consultants here at Iterable, but bringing an SC in early, um, I think the extra things we do is just really outlining what my roles and responsibilities are for the call and then what Nikki's would be. Um, also preparing for like, what outcome do we really want? What does success look like for this call? Making sure that Nikki and I are both clearly aligned there. Um, also preparing for like, things don't go our way. What are three likely outcomes and what's our response in the moment to that? And how are we mm -hmm. both already in sync on how that reaction is gonna be? Calling out any risks on either the, the person or um, the company as a whole. And, and really just coming in with a with a unified perspective on here's our point of view for iterable of, of why we might be able to help your business move forward um, and making sure that both of us have the same mentality and, and points of emphasis there. Mm -hmm. I like that. That's a really great point. Nikki, I'd be curious to hear kind of from the pre-sales side, like when you come into a discovery call and that prep work that needs to happen, uh, tell me some of your best practices or how you think about that. Yeah, you know, the main thing I think that Molly and I worked on through the course of our relationship working together, because we started out pretty early into my career at Iterable, um, at first I noticed that we wouldn't often sync on everything related to the business. So it would be mostly Molly debriefing me on tech things that she had learned or things that she thought would be specific for like a sales engineer or solutions consultant to know. But as we started to work more and more together, the thing that became really important was doing like a full business debrief. So exactly like what Molly said earlier, it's not just about what's their tech stack and what software they're using, but like what is going on with their business? What are their goals for the next year? What impacts their revenue and bottom line? All of that is really important for pre-sales um, resources to know as well. And I think sometimes that gets overlooked in that stage. Mm, certainly, absolutely. And, you know, I certainly agree. A lot of that prep work can really come in, ask strategic questions, have a unique point of view. And then the two of you can kind of um, be a little bit more strategic in how you're approaching the call when you have that background knowledge there. We're not spinning our wheels on information that should be already known or could be easily researched. We can really dig at the right questions uh, specific to that person that might be on the line there. So I really appreciate that. Now, let's go under this circumstance, right? So the two of you go into a discovery call, right? You're prepped, you're ready to go, you have all your right questions, you know, the person that's on the call, 
but sometimes it doesn't always go according to plan. So Nikki, I'd be curious to hear from you. You know, you get into a discovery call, maybe one of those a little bit of wrench is thrown in a little bit. And so how do you handle an objection or a tangent that might need to be taken on that discovery process and kind of handle that like a pro? So I'm curious to hear your perspective there. Yeah, the first line of defense is definitely the plan um, and the planning that Molly had mentioned earlier, where you kind of just lay out like what you'd love to happen and what the outcome should be and try to steer as much as you can back to that. Um, So laying out all those contingency plans is super, super important for that reason specifically, because even if, you know, things go weird, it's kind of a strange conversation. You're trying to rope it back in. At least, you know, this was the end goal. So let me see if I can take notes on anything that I'm picking up. that could be important or ask questions that are getting it back to the main goal. But also I think sometimes those tangents can be really helpful. I think Molly and I specifically have been on a couple of weird discovery calls where maybe we didn't think that the conversation would go the way it did, but it ended up being a really good opportunity to relationship build or get like random miscellaneous business information that we never would have thought to ask. Um, So knowing when to steer it back to your main goal and knowing when to embrace it and just go along with the flow and and collect what information you can. I think those are really helpful things to do and always have Slack or some sort of messaging app in the background so you can communicate um, and and figure out your plan together, even if you're live on the call. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Yeah. And having a lot of those contingency plans laid out just well, it allows the conversation to feel a little bit more fluid, a little bit more conversational, a little bit more natural. Because if you approach the call with your objectives, people can sniff that out right away. And it's like, oh, you're trying to steer me in this direction. It can almost work counterintuitive almost. Um, so Molly, Molly, I'm curious to hear from you. Like, what, do you, what are your kind of thoughts on kind of uh, any changes of course that might need to happen on the call? Yeah, um, one thought I just had around that was from like your comment of people can kind of sniff out if you're trying to push them one way. And I think one thing that really happens when you have two people on the call and one being a solutions consultant that can come in as that very matter of fact, I'm not a salesperson. Here's my point of view. I think it helps get away from the prospect sensing, Oh, they want me to go this way because it can be more conversational in nature just because Nikki and I can create that conversation on the call. Um, But then also one thing that's a little unique to iterable is it's a pretty technical sell and there's Mm. definitely a lot of technical components that go into finding a good fit and making sure it's a qualified opportunity. So as we've gotten into some of these bigger enterprise accounts, you go into a call and you hear a tech stack you've never even heard before. And having Nikki as that technical point of view from the foundation of the first call has been really, really helpful. And yeah, as Nikki mentioned, we've gotten into some pretty interesting discovery calls where uh, we're kind of slacking, where is this going? And and we're able to pull some nuggets out of it and, and actually create opportunities, um, having both of us on the line and especially with that technical nature of iterable, being able to really lay a good foundation for our data differentiators per se, um, very, very early on. Mm-hmm. Certainly, certainly. I like that a lot. I mean, I, I haven't come from the pre-sale space. I think it's one thing that's really powerful too is Just A, you know, when you're the one person solely running a discovery call, your own voice can sound a little stale at times, right? And the person Mm -hmm. hearing that, that audience can be like, all right, it's kind of done with the questions. But when you have that technical counterpart coming in and saying, hey, I've I've listened this entire time. This is one thing I've been really curious about. It can actually get your prospect or audience to open up quite a bit more because you have that unique perspective. And you kind of come in and say, hey, I've been listening this entire time. I I have a few thoughts here. I'm curious to get your perspective here. So uh, certainly that dynamic between those two parties can be really, really impactful on that discovery call and the information you can uncover. Um, And, you know, the other thing too, Molly, I'd be curious to get this is, so, you know, why include pre-sales early? What are some of the benefits? Why do you like to do that outside of what we just talked about there? But what are some of the benefits of including pre-sales early in that, in that sales cycle? Yeah. um, Great question. And Nikki and I were actually experimenting with this early on, um, a little over a year ago. We were like, okay, what if we do bring you in very, very early from the first call? And and how does that change how these deals manifest? Um, And it it was really impactful and you could see it right away. So I think one of the things is just as iterable as matured as a company, we start to think about our demos differently. And it's not just one size fits all. We have different types of demos for different personas. And having the SC who's going to be actually conducting that demo 
on the first call with me, I think helps make it more streamlined and more like Nikki's bought in of like, hey, here's the demo type of demo we're going to do. And we're able to create a stronger narrative relative to that person's pain or that person's goals that they want to achieve based on what types of demos we can do um, to really showcase iterable, whether it's more slides, more platform, um, and what value we want to really portray. Um, the other one is just deal momentum and having multiple voices on the call. One, I think going back to handling tangents, having multiple people on the call helps you really handle objections more efficiently because it's not just one person trying to think on their toes. It's, it's two minds coming together and Nikki will often see something I'm not. She'll be like, oh, you should dig in there. So I think that helps. And then also for deal momentum of just, let's say a prospect goes dark for a week or two after the first discovery call, we had a demo scheduled. They canceled it because it was the first week after Christmas and they wanted to, to push it out a little bit. Um, Nikki can actually follow up with, hey, I know you had mentioned this, like this was really important. You and I had a good discussion on this, like, and she can kind of be a new voice to help get the deal moving again um, and maybe spark something that that I wasn't able to over email. Um, so I think deal momentum with just being multi-threaded on, on our side as much as we want to get multi-threaded on theirs. Um, and so, yeah, those are some of the big ones. And then, as I mentioned, iterable is pretty technical. So having that technical persona to come in as like a matter of fact persona, as we think about differentiating across like 50 marketing automation competitors is, is really helpful. Certainly. Certainly. Yeah. I heard, I heard a few things in there, right? So you talked about a stronger narrative, but I also heard, you know, we have better alignment between what was discussed on discovery and the type of presentation that's being conducted or demo there. So yep. we're just really more in alignment there. You're spending less time, less groundhogs day, if you will. Yep. And the kind of second part of that too is a unique perspective. So keeping the deal momentum up because you have technical resources here, they can offer a unique perspective to kind of keep that conversation moving along. So you don't, yep. you know, stall out at any points and they have a fresh set of eyes, so to speak. Um, yeah. Certainly and, agree with you there. And I would even add that, um, like having Nikki on that call, and actually I just lost my train of thought. Um, <laughs> never mind. Back to you. No, that's no, that's certainly fine. But I really love those two kind of first points around benefits of using pre-sales early in the cycle and how that can impact the sales cycle. Nikki, from your perspective, how, what do you see as kind of some benefits um, of including someone like yourself early in a sales cycle? Yeah, I think um, every party that's involved in the deal heavily, because especially at Iterable, I think at a lot of different SaaS companies or anywhere where you need a sales engineering resource, um, usually that resource is with you through a lot of the deal. So it helps when everyone has the same amount of context. That way, if we go into a call that's like later after the discovery and Molly brings something up, I can say, hey, actually, you know, we heard like X, Y, and Z on the discovery call as well. Maybe we should bring this up. Maybe we can strategize around a little bit more because both of us know 100% of the information. Um, and also, it's just really nice to be treated like a co-seller. I think a lot of sales engineering resources, people in pre-sales don't want to just be pulled in for your tech call or your demo. We really want to help. Like We feel incentivized to close the deal just like our account executive counterparts. Um, so for me especially, I really like feeling like I'm not just there for one or two meetings, but I'm there for the whole deal. And Molly and I are both incentivized to close it and we're really working closely together and not just when she needs someone to run a demo or she needs someone to run a tech call. Mm -hmm. Certainly. I mean, that's one of the most fun and engaging pieces of working as a team like this, right? When you can actually strategize, think deeply about the problems that a customer is working to solve and actually come up with solutions collaboratively as opposed to, hey, just show up and run through this quick demo for me and then see you later. Um, if you can really be treated as like a true partner in you know the selling sales cycle, um, that is really, really helpful. And it, and it comes across on the customer's perspective too. You feel that being a little bit more authentic and genuine in how you're trying to help them come up with any solutions there. Um, so I certainly yeah. appreciate that perspective. And I thought of the other benefit that I was going to say earlier. Cool. Right. I think one thing is like when we're able to mirror a customer's language and when you're able to mirror something in their words, it's so much more impactful rather than you kind of translating that into your own internal vernacular that might not mean anything to the prospect. So I think mm -hmm. having the SC on from, from first go 
really creates that where Nikki's able to then mirror their language back to them so that it's coming from their perspective, not iterable's regurgitation of, of what they said. And then also like if things go wrong or haywire later on and objections come up that you didn't see coming, I don't have to go catch Nikki up to speed on what, all the mm. context of the business to really like enable her to partner with me. It's more, she's already caught up to speed where she's meeting me where they're at and we're able to kind of hit the ground running as we think about triaging different things or um, bumps in the road that could come up in a deal. Yeah, actually Certainly. on that point too, on a really practical note, I think even just having an extra set of hands to take really good thorough notes for you, that has helped us mm -hmm. so many times. I think there's at least three or four oh, yeah. deals where I would literally not say a word on the discovery call. We'd plan for the outcome, but I wouldn't necessarily be part of the conversation, but I end up with like three pages in Google Docs of just notes that I had been typing out in real time as Molly was talking. Um, and some of that helps with that language. So you see the, the terminology that that prospect used, or um, I have really good notes on as they were describing your tech stack that we can refer to later on. So that's another like mm -hmm. practical aspect of just having that extra set of hands and pair of ears there. Yeah, Nikki, I remember which one you're talking about. <laughs> they had their own set of internal language that we had to decode and create like a, a key against. Um, and it was always on their Zoom, so we never got to record it. Um, so that was super helpful as we got into the deal and, and started doing some demos for them. Certainly. Well, excellent. Well, I, I really appreciate uh, the two of you taking some time here with me here today and Talking a little bit about like you know, how does pre-sales and sales work together on discovery process and some of the best practices that you all have, both in how do we prepare for it, handle things live on a real call, and then just what are the benefits? Why should people start to do this uh, when it makes sense? So thank you, Nikki. Thank you, Molly, for the time here today. I hope you all got some, some benefit out of this discussion here today uh, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you for the time. Yeah, thank you as well. Thank you.